speculation through the years about what really goes on inside the remote interior Alaska Air Force facility, usually called by its acronym, HARP. Channel 2's Austin Baird was recently invited onto the facility, and he joins us with a story about what really goes on there, what doesn't happen, and what the facility's uncertain future could mean. Austin. Mike and Maria, most people who have heard of the high-frequency active auroral research program probably learned about the facility from stories scientists call conspiracies. Earlier this week, we visited the site. We spent some time with a scientist who's fighting to help the public understand the research being done at HARP and to make sure the facility isn't closed. If you've ever driven between Glen Allen and Tope, you went right past a military facility that's at the center of many conspiracy theories. The Air Force rarely arranges tours of HARP, the high-frequency act of a rural research program, but we were recently invited by a man who holds the keys to HARP to take an inside look. So you, so you can hear the generators, too, right now. So that... Up ahead is the control room. Christopher Fallon is a mad scientist, but probably not the type you'd imagine. Fallon is mad, confused, and worried that HARP could soon be torn down. When I first saw this array and saw that it's really such a strange, a large, strange machine that was obviously very expensive to build and, and so really kind of caught my imagination. The sprawling array of 180 huge antennas at the Gakona facility enables unique research. I can't Imagine the part of space that George Clooney and Sandra Bullock floated around in the movie Gravity. That's the ionosphere. It's too high for weather balloons to collect data and too low for satellites to stay in orbit. HARP's antennas can focus 3.6 megawatts of energy to a fixed point in the ionosphere. That's enough to create a small artificial aurora, and it's enough that you can get a lot of data that can't be replicated in a lab. What happens in the ionosphere affects many forms of communication. Because it's uh, ionized gas, uh, it affects radio communications, it'll affect your GPS signal, it'll affect your uh, telephone signal, it'll affect your satellite signal uh, out to, uh, uh, you know, if you're getting star band. Uh, network. But DOD leaders say there's little left to be learned from HARP that would be helpful for the military. Moving on to other ways of uh, managing the ionosphere, which the HARP was really designed to do, was to inject energy into the ionosphere, be able to actually control it. And, uh, but that work is, has been completed. The Air Force owns the facility that was built thanks to earmarks from the late Senator Ted Stevens and investments by the Department of Defense. It took $300 million in construction costs and tens of millions in operating costs over the past decade to get this far. And if you ask Dr. Fallon, there's still a lot of good research to be done. I wanted to ask a question, a couple of questions here about HARP. He's among dozens of scientists working with U.S. Senator Lisa Murkowski to get HARP a stay of execution. And he's also working to remove some of the secrecy from the site. AFRL and the Department of Defense do many things very, very well, better than any other organization in the world. But I think the, the, the outreach of the, of the facility and trying to explain to the public and to the schools uh, what, what research is being done here has, has not been done particularly well. He made the five-hour drive from Fairbanks to Gakona to give us a tour hoping to dispel what he calls some common conspiracies. And so whenever we see something unexplained in the atmosphere, these uh, so-called chemtrails, or if the weather behaves uh, strangely, well, can blame it on HARP. People have blamed the antennas for all types of natural disasters, but if HARP really could cause mass destruction, Dr. Fallon says they'd probably start off a little closer to home. If HARP could... could, could eliminate this mosquito problem, I, I don't think we would be having the funding issues that we're having today. And Fallon says their control of the ionosphere is limited to a small speck in the sky. What HARP does to the does to the upper atmosphere is similar to dipping an immersion heater or something that you'd heat up your coffee with in the Yukon River. It might do a very small change, but it's very insignificant and it certainly goes away as soon as you r remove it. The Geophysical Institute at UAF wants to take ownership of HARP and to operate it in a similar way to many other university-owned facilities. If we have a little time, two or three years, I think we can put together a new customer base and a new business model. And that may now happen as the Air Force has just alerted congressional staffs that the shuttering of HARP has been delayed, most likely for the rest of this summer and potentially for much of next year.
Tomorrow we'll explain what exactly the Air Force's announcement means for the future of HARP, and we'll also show you how HARP could be run a lot like the Poker Flat Research Range, something that the University of Alaska Fairbanks is going to be pushing for. Mike and Maria. That is so interesting because so few people have been allowed in that facility, Austin, and they opened it up to you. Yeah, it's take, taken a long time, but finally uh, an inside look at what's going on there. Very interesting. Thanks. Thanks, Austin. Well, still ahead.